Hey, welcome back, guys. Uh, so I figured, you know, made a guide on all the other weapons at least twice already, uh, except the great sword. I kind of shy away from this weapon just because <clears throat> it's really easy to punish if you can play patient. However, this weapon is still good. Like I've said, there's no such thing as a bad weapon in this game, and this is definitely a good weapon. It's just, honestly, the only weakness to this weapon is that it's slow. And it's not like the mind games are bad or anything. That's definitely not the case. It's just really that, like, I mean, <laughs> what are you going to, like, do if you whiff? Like, once you whiff, that's it. You're done, though. So... I will try to give you guys as much knowledge as I possibly can on the great sword. It is a great weapon and I do have a lot of information that can teach you how to play this weapon high level. However, I still can't recommend this weapon over other weapons because this weapon can be easily beaten if you play patient and you play careful. So, let's just talk about what this weapon can do that's actually really really good so first things first is that if you're charging up anytime you charge like this or if you charge like this like if they attack you in between this you automatically clash because this is considered a light even though you're charging this if someone were to attack you in between this before you hear that that sound that before you hear that sound if anyone were to attack you in that animation, let's say if you didn't even let it go, but if you just canceled it, right? If you just kept doing this, like, people wouldn't be able to hit you because this, that, right there, no light would beat you and, like, you get what I'm saying? Like, if you're doing this, you're considered having the properties of a light, which means if someone were to attack you in that, like, I'll show you what I'm talking about, so you can understand it better. So, Katana's probably not a great example, because he runs around too much. Let me just use uh, Spear, because Spear throws out a lot, a lot of lights. See what I'm saying? So, what happens is, if anytime you're charging anything, before it hits blue focus, it automatically is going to clash against any light attack. Which means you don't have to ever actually throw an attack out. You just have to be charging 24-7. So a lot of people don't understand that about the Great Sword. If you're just charging this, it's going to be able to, you know, like, you don't even have to let it go. You could just do this forever and be able to negate all light attacks, you know. So that's really cool and important to note. Now, do note that once you get a charge like that, then their lights come through. Because you're now in focus properties. You get what I'm saying? Because your focus is charged. So the moment you get that shink sound, you now can only like clash with blue focus abilities. However, what you need to realize is that lights will now go through you because you're currently in blue focus, if that makes sense. If that's not making sense, I feel like that makes sense. But if that's not making sense, then let me know and I'll clarified a little bit better but i feel like that should be simple anytime you're charging and like like this whole time that you're charging this right here you're completely invulnerable to lights right that whole time that you're doing this you you can't take any lights right but the moment that you hear that shing sound your own your lights can now go through you but now you clash with blue focus and you tank lights so that's really important because this weapon is really built around defense. So let's let's talk about what this weapon can do. So this weapon, the second attack, no matter what it is, no matter what direction it comes from, it's always going to be a focus attack. Now, the reason why this is important is because... Let's see, who's a good yes, character? Um, soul in this blade. Mm, right. Uh, no. Let's, yes. do, let's do this one. This one's you a lot better. So the reason why this is important is because... You force a mind game sooner than it has to be, which means people are really scared of this weapon because the moment you do this and you hit, they know that next attack is going to be a uh, blue focus. Now, I'm staggering this right here, but if I throw the next attack, 
it's always going to be like that, okay? Now, because it is like that, people are always going to react really, really quickly to this game. Now, the only thing that's really good about the Great Sword is that you can really delay your animations like crazy. Like, look at that. Like, you can delay these junks super late. Like, you can really, like, wait them junks out and just sit in your blue focus 24-7. So that's the thing that's really good about it. But that can also get you in trouble because people can just chip away at your health without you having to respect anything. But you're still taking damage, you know what I mean? So, what's cool about the fact that this second attack is a uh, blue focus is that now that opens up opportunities for you to do stuff like this. Right? Because they're they're expecting the blue focus. It also opens up opportunities for you to do stuff like let's just grab her again. I promise you. And um, do stuff like this. <clears throat> That's actually a guaranteed combo, by the way. So like it gives you opportunities to do stuff like that, where if people know that something is coming out, they can like you can like punish it in a way. So like you can also do something like this, right? So you can have it out and then press it. Right, so you can have it out and then press it, but do it like as you're about to hit. So like, here's what I mean. So like, you can do it and then immediately click it, so that way they can't get away. You know what I'm saying? And that's one thing that you can do. You know, you could just mix in as much as you can and do something like that. So that's just like a cool thing that you can do if you don't like have if you don't play Tarka or something like that, or you can do something like this. Something like that. Now, I'll show you a better way to do that in a second, but uh, that's not what I'm talking about here. So that's the first thing that I just want you to know about this weapon is that this weapon hits really, really hard. The animations are really, really slow. However, if you're charging anything, you're pretty much like you're you're invincible to lights, which makes this weapon a really good counter to people who love to touch lights all the time. This forces people to play off of their blue focuses or to play off of your, anim uh, your whiffing. So... With that being said, um, let's talk about the next thing that's really, really important about this weapon. So, first things first is, number one, this is a really slow animation. Even this, really slow. All of these animations are really slow. So, you never actually want to throw those out. <clears throat> Don't ever do that. The only time you want to even be dealing with any of these is if you're trying to bait out a uh, or you're trying to clash with a light, right? Like, that's the only time you do this. If you're just trying to, like, bait out a light or something like that. That's, don't do it, any of, like, all of that junk. Don't do that. Because people will literally just back away from you and let you whiff it. And then punish you after that. Because you're stuck in the animation once it's, you know. So don't do any of that. The optimal way and the only way to play the great sword is to actually play off your dodge attack. Which is this. Because this is your fastest attack that leads into, like, mind games and it leads into movement. Because the Great Sword is really... <clears throat> the problem with the Great Sword is that it has really slow animations. The range on it isn't that great. And that's really its only problems. Because everything else in the weapon is God tier. But having bad movement uh, while you're in the move and then having, like, bad range is another problem. So they, they kind of countered off of that with uh giving it like great damage right but there's a way to kind of abuse the system and play this weapon in a way that's so optimal that is actually really scary i don't care who you are and it makes great sword back into the list even though i, don't, I haven't really seen anybody play the great sword like this except me however this is definitely the optimal way to play this weapon and it makes it viable uh in in like competitive oh, yeah. play against people with higher reaction time so what you do is you simply you run all the time and you just keep dashing in and out. Now, this move here, you can like spam this, right? Now, if you watch my longsword guy, you know that you can like jump out of these, right? To conserve your uh, stamina, right? So that that's like a cool thing that you can do, right? So you can just keep doing that in order to like conserve your stamina, you know? See what I'm saying? And that allows for you to basically do that forever. Now, 
only jump if you actually want to conserve stamina. You don't have to do that. You just charge it or whatever. Now, remember how I said that if you're not, um, if you're just doing this, then you're basically invulnerable to lights, right? Because no one can actually hit you with a light right there. And the moment that you hear the ching sound right there, that means you can now clash with blue focus and your blue focus is ready. Now, that's really, really fast, right? That's a really, really fast attack that does... Look at how much damage that does. This does a... I mean a lot of damage. That, that does basically a bar of damage. Now, if you double charge it, watch. Look at that. That is so much damage. So you want to spam this because, number one, you only have to hit him twice in order to kill him if you do this. And number two is this has a mind game behind it. One, two, right? That's different timing, right? That's one timing. And then you have one, two, right? And then you have another one, which is one, two, three, right? And that does even more damage. So you really can just play off of this ability alone and never touch anything else. And you would be golden. So, and the good, the good thing about it is that you can like do it, sit in it. And as you're sitting in it, you're just charging your energy. So you can just do this forever. And there's nothing that they can do about it. Like they just have to respect it. They have to let their blue focus go. Or they just sit there and you wait till they attack and they suffer the hit. So that's literally the most optimal way to play this weapon. Now, here's how you make it like deadly, okay? And here's how you build off of that. So, number one is if you charge it, the first one, you get a lot of damage. But you can actually charge it slightly and get a light. So you can just do that and, and then go into something like that if you want, okay? So that's the first thing to note is that you don't actually have to always go into it. You can charge it a little bit and then throw your light. Now, I do be aware that this actually whiffs so much that it's not even funny. Like, I'm not even lying. Like, this, that'll actually aggravate you. Like, I purposely look this way just to, like, you see what I'm saying? Because, like, if I don't, then it whiffs even more. So, you definitely want to, like, like, make sure, like, you're, like, because this will whiff so much. And it's, it makes no sense. You see, like, it. it it's crazy. You, you'll get mad at that for sure. It'll happen to you and then you'll understand it. But that's just something to keep in mind is that if you charge it and you don't let it get into blue focus, you still get out a light attack. Now, another thing to note is that you can do this, cancel it into that, and then get this for a, a load of damage. So I don't want you to ever feel like in order to get high damage, you need to do your blue focus because if you do this and you cancel into that... Look at how much damage it is. That's basically the same thing as a charge level 3, right? So if you can get somebody to respect your charge level 3, then that allows for you to go up into your counter. Or you can just do this. You can just do something like that. So that way you don't even have to like do the lengthy, long animation of like crouching. You can just charge it and look downward like that and then get your guaranteed damage like so. So that's also a really cool thing that you can play off of. Next up that I want to talk about is that whenever you are playing the greatsword and you clash. So I'm going to need the bot to be available for this. Uh, so let's see what he does here. Uh, he's going to throw too many focus attacks. Let me kind of play off of this real quick. See what I'm saying right there? If you just do that every time, even though that's good and you're charging and everything, it, it's cool and everything, but... See what I'm saying? Like, it, it's it's cool and everything, but somebody who's a good high level player is going to punish you really badly. So you have to be aware of such. So because of that, I really want you to start. Um, instead of doing something like that, I want you to like hit it, all right? And if you hold it down, it's automatically going to let it go. By the way. But I want what I want you guys to start doing is hitting it, let them like purposely letting them clash with you, and then once they clash, go into your counter. So like, just hold that out. This bot here, bro, I'm so sleep. And then uh, like you can dodge out of that if you want. You can like you can crouch into like damage. You can jump into damage if you want. But you just make the read, like, because if you can sit in it forever, you never really have to be worried about anything, right? So, 
See what I'm saying? Like, you never have to be worried about anything. And you can jump like that in, into a punish. If you think they're going to, like, try to parry, then you can just jump, right, into a punish, right? Now, the cool thing about this move is that you actually, just like Katana, whenever it's doing its, uh, its focus charge, you actually get uh, low-profile properties, which means if you do this... Because of the way your body is, and if you're playing on an even smaller hero, let's say such as, uh, hold on here. Uh, probably not her either. Someone like her, if you're playing like Matari, this gets even better for you because like, even though they have like the same animation, like your hitbox actually is just a little bit smaller. So you can like actually low profile a lot of horizontal attacks with this. Especially if you're on a hill or something like doing this, you can literally sit there and tank so much like stuff that you like that just doesn't hit you because you're low profile. Just like Katana, whenever it's in his focus charge, uh, it works better on certain characters also. Um, if you didn't know, so that's really powerful and everything. But just remember, if you clash, you don't always have to go into your heavy attack or your focus attack. I mean, sometimes it's best to actually just jump and then punish like so. Because, again, you get the same amount of damage. It's it's all guaranteed. So there's no point in, like, trying to do something that you don't have to do, you know? Like, just enjoy the, like, the, the ability to be able to ignore everything in the game. Don't try to, like, be one-dimensional. You know, you don't really have to be. So if you ever do clash... I'm waiting for him to throw a light, but he's not throwing one, so I can show you what I'm talking about. Uh, this is going to take quite a while. You see, this is what I mean when I say, like, yeah, whatever. I don't have time to wait on the bot. But anyways, if you if if you do this and you, like, let's say you're just spamming this and you just, I need to get a light or whatever. And you just spam that and you just keep spamming that. You're going to be able to eventually clash with a light, okay? While also, if they somehow, somehow you, like, do something wrong. Still charging in, in blue armor, so that way you don't take a hit, you know? So, you're going to be okay while you're doing this. If you ever do get a clash and you know your opponent is good, all you have to do if you think they're going to counter is jump and do that. Now, if you think they're going to dodge, then you do it and you wait and just take your hand off of everything and wait to see what they do, right? And then dodge, and then do that to punish, and tech chase with that, okay? So, with all of that being said, it looks much the great sword is a good weapon. It really is. The only thing that, you, you kind of have to play it like the long sword, a hit and run type of deal. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, that's gonna whiff, and that's gonna be aggravating, but you really have to play this weapon like a hit and run and bait type of weapon. You can't really use it any other way. So that's really like the most optimal way to play this weapon is to always be prepared to like jump into your guaranteed damage, right? Or uh, to be prepared to like like faint that. Uh, be prepared to if you throw this out, be prepared to use an ability or something like so. Uh, by the way, people still don't know that this is the best move that she has, not that other crap. So anyways, you let that go. Um, it's just better to like have options. People always want to use focus attacks with the greatsword and it actually gets them punished. Because there's actually no answer to this weapon. If someone plays this weapon properly, you actually can't lose. Like, if you can like sit here and react to focus attacks, how can someone beat you? What can they do? Somebody please tell me, what can they do? You get an, you get an iframe, all right? Straight into like a bunch of and it's just really fast, you know. So like, the range on it isn't bad, you know. Even the second hit, if only the second hit hits, it hits for a lot. So it's like a double hitting blue focus move. It's really really good. The only way people can beat you is if you make a mistake with this weapon. Now again, like I said, the weapon is new, but if you play like distant, this weapon can you really just have to play to the opponent's stupidity in order to beat this weapon. But if the opponent is really good with the gray sword. You really can't beat this weapon because how do you beat that? Like this is with a with a blue focus attack or a gold focus attack. But guess what? If you throw a gold focus attack, all gold focus attacks start off with the blue attack first. 
which means if you're charging this and you just react to that jump, you'll be good. Or you can just simply do this, dash out of the way, right, while you're doing it and you're charging it, and be like, oh, shoot, I don't want to deal with that, and then charge it again. And then punish, you know? So you really don't have to be afraid of anything with this weapon. Now let's talk about some a way to kind of make this weapon a little bit faster and a little bit better. Again, high level, how to be high level with the great sword. So one thing you can do is this. So you can do this. Do something like that. Precision is a thief's best tool. And you can do something like that. Now, if you are ever doing this online, right? You can like keep this up as much as you want. So there's like no downside to this whatsoever. You can just do this whenever you want. And all you gotta do is just switch your weapon, right? And then switch it back through the dashes, right? And then you're good. So that's really all that you have to do is nothing more than that. So, right, that's literally what I'm doing is what you're seeing right now, dashing and then changing my weapon. Or if I'm here, Dashing and then changing my weapon. Dashing, changing my weapon. Dashing, changing my weapon. Dashing, changing my weapon. Dashing, changing my weapon. You see what I'm saying? You see how animation cancels? So that's like a cool thing right there, right? So because you can do this, you can kind of just do this little... What are you using? See what I'm saying? So abuse the heck out of that. Where you're just running and you animation cancel this with your weapon switch. So... You can do something like that and then pop. See what I'm saying? So abuse that. Um, and you can just do it however much you want to your heart's content. And it's pretty like self-sustainable, like, you know. So that's actually everything that I have. Like I said, the great sword is a pretty simple weapon, so it's not too much, but this is a really good weapon. But the only way to really play this weapon high level is to play off of this. If you're not playing off of this, you're not going to be using the weapon to the maximum, like, potential. So, yeah. Uh, that's everything I have to say. Thank you guys for watching. Maybe like, comment, or subscribe. Who knows? Whatever. We'll see. I don't really care. Uh, but it'll be cool. So, anyways, see you in the next one.